Welcome to the Stop Over Drinking and Start Living podcast, where high achieving working moms come to learn how to stop over drinking, reduce overwhelm and anxiety, and show up like the players they were meant to be. I'm your host, Angela Masenek, and let's dig in. Welcome to episode 32, an interview with my client, Amy. I am so excited for today's podcast, you guys. I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Amy, and she is a current client of mine, private client. She signed up with me for help with over drinking and overeating. And we are going to talk about all the things with Amy today. I'm super excited. She is my first client that has been willing to come on here and share everything with you because she's had some major life transformations and I'm so thankful for her. And I've just loved watching her journey through the past couple months and she's totally slaying it. So welcome to the show, Amy. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm actually very honored that you asked. Oh, well, I'm super glad that you said yes (laughs) when you decided to sign up with me. (laughs) Yes. So listeners, as you prepare for this um, podcast episode, maybe get a notebook out, um, get your coffee ready. It's going to be a longer one than usual. We're going to have about four sections of this call. We're going to talk to Amy about her thoughts a lot about before coaching, during coaching. We're uh, wrapping up our um, two month time together here soon and sort of her evaluation of her growth throughout those two months together. And then I'm going to coach Amy so you guys can hear what that sounds like. So many of you that are interested in coaching don't really know or understand what that looks like. And so I'm going to coach her for about 15 minutes on a recent issue and you get to hear what that sounds like. So if you guys are ready, we're going to jump in. You ready, Amy? I'm ready. Let's do it. Awesome. So the first part of this is about the consult. So as you know, listeners, I offer a free 30-minute consultation for anybody that's interested in what coaching would look like with me to learn more about working with me or just to get some immediate help with where they need to go on their next steps in their journey to stop over drinking and to stop over eating. So Amy, what were you thinking when you scheduled that call with me? I was... It, you were actually the second person I had scheduled that uh, a 30 minute, you know, call with. And the reason was, is because I was scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden I saw an ad for, you know, are you over drinking and are you over this and that? And I clicked on it and I'm like, okay, that could be me. And I started doing a little more research into it and um, I ended up calling this, this other person and um, looking into it. And it was, it was too expensive for me. So I, I, that was it. And I never, you know, I didn't go any further. So then I started um, looking for a podcast that maybe that covered these topics. And so I, I Googled, you know, over drinking podcast and yours was the first one up. So I said, Oh, great. And Oh, look, she does this 30 minute phone call or, you know, consultation Mm -hmm. as well. So maybe I'll, I'll give this a go. So, you know, did a little research and then gave you a call and, um, and it ended up being, you know, in the same ballpark. And I just remember this complete, you know, overwhelming feeling of like deflation and disappointment. And, you know, it was, it, it just kind of took the wind out of my sails. Um, but I, I, it's like, I can just go back right to that exact moment of that, you know, the helplessness feeling that I was having in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what were your exact thoughts when I told you the price of the program? (laughs) So when you, I guess, I I guess I went into it feeling like really hopeful, like, oh, maybe this is the one for me. Um, You know, it was, you know, I was just excited, really. And then when I heard the price, it was like, it was, I had kind of, I shut my door and I said, nope, that's it. It's too expensive. Um, You know, and like I said, I was disappointed. But it was like, well, I guess I'm just going to have to find another avenue. And, and that I kind of really decided in that moment, like, nope, not for me, I guess not. Um, and there was two, two main reasons, I would say. Um, number one was I, I didn't know how my husband was going to react to it. Um, and I, I always, you know, I look for his support. I don't, you know, I don't need his blessing on everything I do. But, you know, it's nice to have somebody on your side going, yeah, you should, or yeah, you can. Um, and then, and then I started thinking about, 
um, there was a couple things that you had had said and talked about, and it was all about like, um, you know, the funds are there. It's just you need to figure out your priorities in life, basically. And I, I did. I started thinking about uh, reallocating my funds. Like, okay, well, do I need this or do I, you know, what do I prioritize in life? Um, and right now, it's drinking and it's going out to dinner anytime I want. And and really, those were the things that were taking priority over everything. And I think when I finally realized that, I, that's when I realized, um, okay, well, you know maybe I can just make this a priority and, you know, start down this new path. Yeah. So like, I think it's so interesting when you mentioned the husband part, because I would say 95% of the people that get on consultations with me (laughs) have to talk to their spouse or their husband. And um, that's always like our initial sort of like gut reaction sometimes when it's a price that's like, Oh my gosh, like you couldn't just get away with running that on your credit card without right. See, right? <laughs> Which I don't know. I kind of feel like I to me it was a good excuse in the moment. Like, yes. oh, I got I got to talk to my husband because yes. you know, it's really not my decision. Right. But, but really when it comes down to it, if I want something, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you know, and I'll convince him that it's it's a good good way one way or another, you yes. know. So so really for me, I was using it as an excuse. And again, is it nice to have his blessing? Is it nice for him to say, yes, I support you and let's do this together or, you know, but, but really in the moment, it was all about, um, it's you like know, an easy it's way out, excuse. right? It's just Absolutely. An easy way out. like, of course you have to talk to your husband, you know, yes. in a little sense, this is a big purchase. Like even we kind of sell ourselves on that when we don't want to be sold on something, right? Like sure. you have this past, like, oh, there's that husband that's got to help <laughs> make that right. for us. And yes. I think it's so interesting when you said that, think about all the other things that you've wanted in your life, like a vacation that maybe he hadn't been thinking about and you wanted mm-hmm. to plan and how much that costs and how you're able, like, if you want something, you get sure. it, right? Like Absolutely. you don't come to him already convinced that it's what you want. And so it's really like just selling him and getting him on board, right? Versus like needing to ask permission. And I think that my clients don't, they want to say, well, I have to talk to my husband. And then it just ends there often. Right. And if we can get past that and like really understand what it is that you want. And if you believe that it would work for you, like 100%, you would never even have to convince, right? Like you're just like, I'm doing this. I'm just letting you know after the fact or that I'm going to have this purchase, right? Yeah. Totally yeah. different. Yeah. Absolutely. But I think yeah. the issue is that some people don't see that this program or the private life coach could help them solve the problem. And I think what's interesting about you is that you saw, like you started thinking about it differently, right? Like you said, well, maybe I can look at how I'm spending. Like, let me give myself some space to analyze how I'm spending my money. Like, what if this was possible, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, um, I took that because um, initially when I spoke to you, it was, all right, well, you know, let's take 24 hours. Let's, you know, let's mm-hmm. think about things and, and get back to me one way or another, which was a nice, a nice deadline for me to go, okay, that, you know, I have, I have a day to think about this. Let's do yeah. it. And, yeah. um, and so I really, I put a lot of thought into it and, um, and really when it came down to it, my husband was on board. He was, he was, he basically said to me, you know what you need to do. And so I, I knew what I needed to do. That's awesome. Good. Well, thank you for sharing that. I think that's a, a big one for people to just kind of get over that hump. If they can get over that hump and like mm-hmm. kind of have some belief in themselves and belief that this will work for them and see the possibility of the other side, then they'll go to work to make it happen, right? Even if it is, you know, talking to your husband or pulling money for, you know, reallocating funds or figuring it out, right? Absolutely. Because you know what, if you're, if you're at the point where you're A, listening to the podcast or B, reaching out for this 30 minute consultation, you're at a point in your life where you're questioning things, you know, you're, you're at a point where you haven't tried this. Mm -hmm. So and that was it for me. You know, it's like, I haven't tried this. I've tried a lot of other things, but yeah. I haven't tried this. So let's do it. Awesome. So tell me about the beginning of the program. So after you signed up with me, I want you to share your thoughts to the audience about how you approached. like, what was your mindset when you started this work? I think when I, when I first started, I was nervous. I was, I was like, you know, is this going to work? You know, you go into it and you're all in and you're like, okay, this is it for me. My life is going to change. And, you know, you have all these like grandiose thoughts of, you know, success, which is great. 
And then, you know, your primitive brain starts kicking in and it's like, well, it's going to be a lot of work. And, you know, you start getting the packets of, you know, the workbook, the information, and you realize, wow, this, okay, this is going to be a big undertaking. And, oh my God, I got to, I got to journal every day. And that's a huge, when am I going to do it? And when am I going to find time? And, you know, when am I going to make these weekly appointments um, to sit down with Angela and talk to her? And so, you know, initially, you know, right when I signed, it was like, okay, yes, good. This is wonderful. And then, you know, soon after all the other thoughts kind of start creeping in, but that's, you know, come our first uh, meeting, that's when we, we already started ironing out some of those thoughts that I was having about it. Yeah. So at first you were big, you were nervous, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which is great. I think that's a good sign that it's, you know, when I feel like nervous or anxious about something, like doing something new, I always think like, that's a, that's my little red flag. It's like the go flag. Like okay. We should move forward with that. And so I think it's really interesting that you thought that. I don't think I knew that you were nervous. I never saw that in you. So no, oh, funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what did you do consistently? Like from the get go? I've journaled every day. I think I've missed two days. Um, you know, accidentally I w- would go to sleep and wake up in the morning. Oh my God, I forgot to journal last night, but two days um, that I didn't journal, but every other day has been a like, journaling success. I've really enjoyed it. I've, you know, I I just start writing and I I was nervous that I would, you know, run out of things to say, but all of a sudden you start writing and your pen just keeps going and going. And, and I've, I've learned so much about myself really by, by journaling and by getting all my thoughts down. So that's been great. Yeah. So that is just so you listeners know, it's, you know, I assign homework (laughs) for my private clients to do in between sessions. None of it's required, of course, but Amy, would you agree? Like the more work you put into it, the more, the quicker results that you get. 100% that. And also talking about quick results is immersing yourself in situations that are going to make you uncomfortable, Mm -hmm. but having the tools to know how to process the feelings. Yeah, I think that's so important. And that's one thing that I've shared so much on my own journey is when I first started this and I had my first life coach and I was like working on losing weight and stopping over drinking is like, I did not hold back from the social situations. And like, I actually looked forward and like made extra (laughs) plans with my friends to go out so I could process my feelings and understand what I was thinking in those moments without having alcohol or food to distract me from my own thoughts and my own feelings. So right. Amy, you signed up, you know, like in the midst of all of your, oh my gosh, you had so many visitors, vacations, like the 4th of July, like all of that stuff, all of that stuff, why why it's always a good time to code now instead of waiting. So I I actually went back and forth on this. Well, okay, so I'm going to be having the coach when, you know, these people are here visiting and, and then it's the 4th of July and those people are going to be visiting. So you know, and my go-to with all these people is to drink. So, you know, like, well, maybe I should wait, or maybe I should, you know, just push it a little. um, Because, you know, and then I realized, you know what, number one, it's never a good time for anything, anything, you know, that you try to plan in life. It's really never a good time or a bad time. It's just the time. And so, um, what was I going to say about, oh, so um, let's see lost my train of thought. <laughs> I asked Bring you about all the social situations and you had the having the, the perfect time. Yeah. 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 So it's like the perfect time is now, right? It is, but I had a really good point about it. <laughs> I can't think about it. <laughs> it's okay. We can come back to it. All right. So tell me about your utilization of all the resources. So not only do we have our one hour weekly coaching session, but tell me about how you used all the resources available. Um, let's see. So resources available being, um, the podcast, number one, the podcast is like this lifesaver. It's like, it's the little, you know, bump in between our meetings. Mm -hmm. I I listen to them and I can relate to them and they're, they're fantastic. I love it. Good. And then we have the, um, Marco Polo. Oh yeah. The, the Marco Polo, um, that's that's something that um doing the video chats for it's like a a text messaging video chat um Mm -hmm. and 
that's something that kind of puts me out of my comfort level. Um, but I'm like, you know what, just go for it. And like, why not? You know, who cares? No one, no one's judging. No one's, you know, you know, you never feel, you feel judged or anything in that situation. So yeah, I, I like, remember Let's do when it. you said that in the beginning. Yeah. Of that. Oh my gosh, you've yep. come such a long way. It's so <laughs> <laughs> yep. That and, you know, having you through email, having you through text message. Um, and just, I remember one morning I was having this, this really hard time of, I was working through this thought model and um, I took pictures. Uh, I'd written them both out, my, you know, my current thought model and my intentional thought model. Take pictures of both of them. I send them to you. I'm like, what am I doing wrong here? Like, help me out. And, um, you know, I, I remember initially you were like, okay, your, your thought and your feeling are backwards, you know, switch <laughs> those and, you know, like do this and this. And now how do you feel about that? And we just worked through it. And this was, you know, my whole family was home and I didn't have time to, you know, sneak a phone call in, um, or a Marco Polo. It was just, okay, a couple texts and we, we ironed it out and it worked out. So it's just have, it was, it's just always nice knowing that you have that person in your corner um, because it, you need those people in your corner and, you know, it was, it was great. Awesome. So tell me about, you know, you're, you're probably around this area, like you're, you're maybe three to four weeks in at this point, you're starting to see some big shifts. You're definitely like not drinking as much. Right. And like, mm-hmm. you know, feeling better, but when did you start seeing like the big emotional sort of like, Oh my gosh, wow. Like, I can't believe this is happening. I think from the beginning, because I got in the mindset of like, this is my new life. Um, I think I started slowly seeing that shift sort of right away, but really, you know, a couple weeks in and you're still, you know, you're still challenged with social situations and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, You're still, you know, it's still, it's still a process. It's still a learning process, but you, all of a sudden you notice I'm not thinking about alcohol. I'm not thinking about food 24 seven, you know, like it's, you just notice in these small moments of like, I'm not overeating or, you know, I'm not, I'm I'm at a social situation. It's not a planned drink day. I'm not drinking, but I'm still having a really good time. Mm -hmm. And in those moments, you're like, wow, this is, this is actually possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm coming up on my eighth week and, um, you know, as a, as a whole, I'm not thinking about alcohol on the daily at all. You know, it's just, it's not, and I never really thought that I would get this far so quickly. Um, but yeah, it, it's like, here I am and this is what I've done. This is what I've accomplished thus far, you know? So, and that's been only eight weeks. So I can't imagine in the next, you know, couple weeks, months, years, you know, what I'll accomplish and how I'll feel. Yeah, that's so amazing. I think a lot of us think that because we've had the problem for so long, you know, for me, it was 20 years for you. I don't think it was that long. Um, But like, we think it's going to be this long daunting process, right? And like, Mm -hmm. it's going to be horrible, but you can make huge shifts in your relationship with food and alcohol in a short amount of time. And I think you're just living proof of that, of like being committed to doing the work, doing the homework assignments, utilizing the resources and just being committed and believing that you can get there and like, look at where you are now. Yes, absolutely. I know. I, I just, what, what did it for me in the beginning was, you know, I, I would say I've always been like an over consumer of whether it was food or alcohol. So like, you know, in college I would just overdo it, but it wasn't like really like alcohol wasn't a huge thing for me, but then all of a sudden, you know, as time goes on, you're drinking more, you're drinking more, and then you're an adult and all your friends are drinking and, and, you know, it's that, you know, quote unquote, fun thing to do. And it just, it became this, this thing that just wasn't really that fun for me anymore. And I, I, I went on this, um, you know, a short weekend vacation and, um, you know, just raged every single day. And, you know, we all left, it was a group of us and we all left and we all were kind of joking like, oh, we're never going to do that again. Well, guess what I did the next day was I did it on my own. You know, I tore yeah. through a bottle of wine and it was like, okay, now I'm done. Like, th- yeah. like now I feel like it, it's getting to a point where it is out of my hands and mm-hmm. I, I don't want to be like that anymore. And, you know, and alcohol and food, they go together. And so you, you drink too much, you eat too much, but I was overeating even when I was not over drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so anyway, it was time. It was, I was ready to go. So I really was all in. 
Awesome. Tell me about, yeah. Tell me about the food stuff in your weight loss journey. I think you told me you lost 17 pounds in seven weeks. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I have lost 17 pounds. Yes. And to me, that just means it just shows you like how much I was over drinking and overeating. Every meal was a, an overindulgence and I was ready to stop doing that. And I really, really have. And I, I, the, the whole food thing um, is, it's been so amazing because that's something I have always, I've always medicated with food. You know, you're happy, you're sad, you're celebrating, you're miserable. It's like, oh, just, you know, buffer with food. And so to, to be in this situation now where I'm consistently losing weight um, because I'm, I'm making healthier choices, I know when to stop. You know, you worked out with me, a, um, you know, you eat when you're, you know, X on, you know, the, the food scale of hunger. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and then you stop when you're at X and like, that's a great little cue for me to, Oh, I, you know what? I'm not stuffed, but I don't have to be stuffed in order to yes. stop, stop eating. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, that's been, that's been fantastic. I think it's really interesting too. So like once you remove, if you, you know, I helped Amy set up a protocol with her food and we talked about, um, the hunger scale, which I've talked about in previous podcasts. So basically like you eat when you're hungry, you know, you're not starving, you're just mildly hungry and you stop when you're satisfied, but you don't stuff yourself. Right. And when you do that and you don't over drink and you're not eating because you're stressed or you need to celebrate everything, or it's truly when you're eating, when you're hungry and you're planning your drinks ahead of time, right? You're left with all this time (laughs) in the day (laughs) or in the evenings with your thoughts, right? So before when you're overeating and over drinking, you don't really even know what you're thinking or feeling because you're constantly buffering. You're constantly covering up what's going on in your head and in your emotional well-being with food and alcohol. And when you remove that and you stop doing those things, you're still left with the thoughts and the feelings that you haven't been willing to analyze before. <laughs> and so it can be very hard and challenging to like get through those moments. If you don't have the tools like the model or a coach or somebody right there helping you through that. So Amy, what were you able, were you able to like uncover anything about yourself that you hadn't known before because you had been overeating and over drinking? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, especially with journaling, you know, being in that quiet time of, you know, just writing out my thoughts, you know, I, I realized, which you helped point out to me, is that a lot of the reason that I was eating was anticipation of being hungry. Like, mm-hmm. what? Like, what? <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. You know, like, it's, you know, and then another, your point was that, you know, we live in a first world country, we we're not going to run out of food, you know, mm-hmm. even if I had nothing in the house, I still have a car, I can go to a restaurant, I can go to a grocery store, I can go somewhere, I can, I have a garden outside. I'm not going to go hungry. So the fact that I was eating in anticipation of being hungry, mm-hmm. you know, it just opened my eyes to, okay, maybe I shouldn't eat right now. Like that's not a reason to eat. A reason to eat is if you're actually hungry and I wasn't hungry. I was eating otherwise. So. Yeah. It's like the idea that you should eat like a big lunch before you're going to be out shopping or running around errands all day because mm-hmm. you might get hungry later. Right. <laughs> don't do that <laughs> yeah. because like you're overeating then, right? Cause you're not hungry. Your body's going to store that as excess fuel and that is yeah. fat. Right. And then like when you're out, like you always have access. We all, everyone listening to this podcast has access to food and water whenever they need it. <laughs> if you've got an iPhone, you have access to everything. So right. knowing that it's not an emergency and that you can get access to these things, I think just is a weight lifted. Yeah. And also knowing, knowing, what actual hunger is. It's yes. like, you know, if you're, you're watching a commercial about a Big Mac, you know, like, yeah, sure. You might feel your stomach growl. That doesn't mean yeah. you're hungry. Um, yes. But, you know, because it's been a couple hours and you've had some water and, you know, it, your body is hungry. Okay. Well, great. Let's have one of your planned meals that you've, mm-hmm. you you know, plan to have today. Yeah. I think it's interesting to just be able to feel those natural, um, vibrations in your body like what does real hunger feel like what does like what happens if you let that hunger go for an hour nothing right Mm -hmm. like you're not going to die like it's nothing to panic about and just kind of resetting yourself when you're not constantly eating and over drinking and buffering is such an important sort of like getting back to like a more homeostasis with yourself 
And what that natural rhythm looks like is crucial. Yeah. And my, my over hunger is gone. I don't, I'm, I'm not constantly hungry all the time. And I remember asking you like, all right, so when, you know, if I'm hungry, I just, I, I don't want to be uncomfortable about that, mm-hmm. you know? And I remember you saying to me, well, how uncomfortable are you willing to get? Mm-hmm. And it was like, whoa, I, I guess I can be uncomfortable. I, you know, it, it's okay. I'm not going to die like this. I, I can do this and I can get through this, but it was just reframing it in my brain and, you know, the, changing that thought. And, you know, and now I am seeing the results. So awesome. All right. So we're, you know, approaching your last session. I think our next session is scheduled the day after tomorrow when this podcast will be aired, by the way. <laughs> so tell me, like you mentioned earlier that you didn't think you would ever in such a short amount of time, um, not be agonizing about whether to drink. Tell me about then before you signed up for coaching and like what, how often you thought about drinking and all that versus now. So back before I started with you, it was, I would say at least, I don't want to say a daily struggle, but it was at least a daily thought. It was Mm -hmm. me waking up in the morning after drinking and saying, Oh, I I just, why did I do that? Like, why did I have a bottle of wine? when we were just sitting there watching TV, you know, I had plenty of other better things to do and, and didn't. Um, So, you know, you wake up in the morning and you're like, okay, well, I'm definitely not doing that tonight. Um, And you end up in that same pattern. You you just do it again. It's like, okay, well, I don't have to work tomorrow. So perfect. I can drink tonight. And then come Friday, Saturday, Sunday, it was like a free for all like, okay, great. Well, there's no work in the weekend. And you know, Friday's a celebrate night because, you know, you just got through the week. And so I was, I was consistently drinking too much. And it, you know, if I didn't drink, it was like, okay, that's fine. You know, I got to work tomorrow or whatever the circumstance was. But if I was drinking, I was over drinking. And, and then if I had gone, if I would go to an event where there was alcohol and I had to drive, limiting myself was so difficult. It was like, I'd rather just not drink and just be angry about it and not have a good time at the party because, you know, I would, I would be so consumed with the fact that I couldn't drink alcohol or Mm -hmm. I could only have one. Um, So yeah, that's, that's where I was. Mm -hmm. So tell me about how much alcohol occupies your mind now. I would say it was a nine before I started with you. And I would say it's about a two now. That's amazing. I, yeah, it, it'll pop into my head. And at this point, I'm so far into the process where I can just say, oh, that's not how I think anymore. Or nope, not good. You know, I, I just I can move along about my day because mm-hmm. it's not going to consume me. That's amazing. Yay. So tell us mm-hmm. about the freedom that that feels like. Like, what have you been able to think about instead? What have you been able to do? Like, you've improved your relationships, like so much. So tell us like what freeing that mind space has done for you. So it, I mean, it just opens up worlds really. I mean, working out, I've been working out very consistently. Um, I, you know, I have a six-year-old son that requires a lot of attention, rightfully so. And I've, you know, instead of sitting there having a glass of wine and watching him play, I can engage in play. I can play baseball with him. I can, you know, I can, you know, it's, it's going to sound silly, but for me going out to dinner and, you know, having one or two drinks with my husband is so much more enjoyable now because number one, I can drive home. Like it's not even a, a thought in my head, like, Oh, Oh, we have to Uber and spend the extra money and do all this. No, I'm driving home. It's not a big deal. Um, but, you know, so many things. It just, it really just opens you up. And, you know, it, and it's, it is hard in the beginning because you are left with your thoughts that you have pushed aside for so long. Yes. So there's a lot of, you know, processing and there's a lot of journaling and there's a lot of talking. Um, and I've, I've actually found that talking about it with my friends has been very therapeutic for me. Just getting it out there and, you know, having a lot of my friends too going, you know, I mean, you could take alcohol, you could take food, you could you just insert any of your issues mm-hmm. um, that you're having and, you know, apply this model to it and it, it works. So, so good. Love yeah. it. So what do you think is next for you? Like now that you're not over drinking and you're losing all this weight, do you have any other personal goals that you'd like to accomplish? Ooh. Hmm. 
you know what, that's probably a really good idea to sit down and, you know, my, <laughs> cause my goals at this point are kind of met, you know, I wanted to drink less. I wanted mm-hmm. to be able to go into social situations and have one or two and be okay with that. And, um, you know, I'm getting to a point where I, you know, I, that I am okay with that. So I guess I need to sit down and start reevaluating and see yeah. where, where I want to do. I know one thing that I wanted to do is my, I run 5Ks and I've never want, run one under 30 minutes. And so, okay. yep. So that's my, you know, I've gotten to 30 and change. I've gotten to uh-huh. 31, 32, but never under 30. So that's, that's been a goal. So that's awesome. Well, you can totally yeah. do it. No doubt in my mind. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> don't, yeah. Don't you feel like once you've solved this problem, like you, you don't over drink anymore. You've solved that problem, right? And you don't overeat. Like right. that's done. Like, don't you feel like a total badass? Like you can do anything. Right. Like ready to tackle the, you know, the next thing that comes yes. in and something that you opened my eyes to was the whole, if you're not challenged, you're not growing. So, yes. you know, I, I bring on the challenge now, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, okay, great. Like this is going to be a challenge. So I can, I can process this correctly. I have the tools to do it. So mm-hmm. bring it on. Like what else you got? That's awesome. (laughs) Yay. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that. So now I want to coach you to show the audience what that sounds like. So tell me about um, if you had any chance to think about this, but like, has there been a struggle with you? And since the last time we we did our private session, like what's, what's come up since then? Hmm, I would say, so over the past weekend, um, you know, I, I don't, <clears throat> could have been sort of hormonally, you know, got my period and it was, you know, just, there was a lot going on on Saturday and I really just felt I was overwhelmed in the moment. Um, I, ha- I was attending a picnic um, at our cottage and it's like this annual thing and it's a lot of fun. And, you know, there's a sandcastle contest in the morning. So we had to get up early and rush over there to, to make a sandcastle. And of course my son came up with this wonderful idea and, you know, obviously I'm executing it for him in the hot sun and I'm miserable and I'm, you know, uh, and he's finding the shells and it was actually a really cute idea. It was a snowman on the beach. So I'm, I'm building this snowman on the beach and he's finding the shells for, you know, the, the buttons. Um, it was very cute, but in the moment I'm hot, I'm miserable. I'm, you know, and I just, I was feeling overwhelmed that I, I didn't exactly know why. And mm-hmm. it was just the whole day, it was sort of a struggle. Um, mm-hmm. And there was no, nothing specifically that was bothering me, but I just, you know, I just couldn't get out of my own way. Mm-hmm. So what are the facts about that? So you had Saturday, um, were you at your cottage? Already? Yes. Okay. Yep. So the facts are that you were at your cottage on Saturday and you were building the sandcastle with your son. Mm-hmm. What else? Um, and it was the whole sandcastle thing was part of this uh, picnic that there's a bunch of activities throughout the day. And um, so we got down there, the tent was already set up and our table was already there and set up. Um, you know, you bring your cooler of snacks and water and, uh, yeah, it was just, I, I really not sure why, but I was just, I couldn't get out of my own way that mm-hmm. day. So what were you thinking before you went to the building, the sandcastle? Um, that it was, you know, kind of maybe a little bit of a struggle to get out of the house, that it was, um, you know, it was, it was going to be hot and humid that day. Um, you know, there, I guess there was just a lot to do. Oh, and I, I hadn't made... A side dish yet that I was supposed to make so I had the ingredients but when I got there I knew I had to kind of uh, rush 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 to get everything done for uh, for lunchtime mm-hmm. so like before you even like left the house you were sort of thinking about all the things that you had to do that day you had to make the salad it's going to be hot yep right so is, is that kind of like your thought process at that moment yeah um yeah I was just I guess stressed about what was to come throughout the whole day. Mm-hmm. And did you like kind of play out the whole day in your mind before it even started? Um, not necessarily. No, it was just like every moment that seemed to come in kind of just, I would, you know, I, I don't know. I would just kind of process it like as it came one, one step at a time. Mm-hmm. 
So let's just use this, you know, going back to like the facts of the building of the sandcastle and the picnic. And then your thoughts that morning before you left were like, it's going to be hot. There's a lot to do. I've got to build the salad. And so when you think those thoughts, how do you feel? Stressed and uh, overwhelmed and kind of annoyed, annoyed that I kind of like let myself get to this spot of, um, of stress. Mm hmm. Because I, I could have easily done and, you know, made the, the dish the night before and mm. something simple like that. But yeah, yeah, just overwhelmed, really. Okay. So when you felt overwhelmed, how did you, what did you do in those moments? Um, I mean, I was acting miserable to everybody. I was um, most likely not fun to be around. Mm. Um, did you like yell at people? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see yeah there was probably some yelling going on <laughs> a little yelling a little bit <laughs> a little bit here and there uh -huh. um I was easily blaming somebody um so when I was up at the cottage kind of frantically uh making my side dish my mom was up there and I had to bring my my son up because you know there's water there so I'm like you know just just come up with me get you away from the water you know it'll take 20 minutes and then and then we can head back down and so we're sitting there and my mom was in the, in the cottage with me and my, I just kept thinking, well, why won't she just bring him down? And I could have just nicely asked her, but of course, no, I'm, you know, like, oh, well, she should know that she should right. just, you know, step into the role and, and take him down there. And, you know, but she was busy doing stuff too. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so I was, yeah, I was snappy and uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So that thought, do you see how it was your thought about that morning and like what you had ahead of you that it was like, this is a little bit of a struggle. It's going to be hot. There's a lot to do. we got to rush. What, what is going to happen later? Like all of those thoughts led you to feel overwhelmed. Yes, absolutely. Do you see that it wasn't the actual activity that you had planned? Right. Yep. Yeah. Cause you could think about it any way you want. Right. Mm-hmm. But your sort of automatic process, your automatic thinking is like, this is going to be a struggle. <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. And so when you uh -huh. felt that overwhelm about all of it and all the details and everything you had to do, you just kind of lashed out a little bit. You weren't fun to be around. You didn't enjoy the experience, right? Yep, exactly. And probably in the past, like before we started coaching together, you probably would have drank. Oh, ate. I, I, yes. And I, I had those urges and I even... I even said that to my husband because he would ask me, you know, like, what, what is wrong with you? Like, <laughs> he didn't say calm down, thankfully. Um, <laughs> but, you know, he, he definitely noticed that something was going on with me. And, uh, you know, and I've tried to be a little open with him about what's going on in, in this whole, you know, eight week process. Yeah. And, um, and I said, you know, today is a day that I would like to drink. And normally this is, this would be my go-to like, okay, just drink, sit here and forget all about it. And, you know, and then have a, have a great rest of the day and, you know, regret it for the next week. But, you know, <laughs> this is, and this is the moment that I would normally drink and mm -hmm. I just need a little time to sit here and process and do it correctly. Cause now I do have the tools to correctly process these feelings and emotions. And in the moment it's still, very very hard it doesn't mean that you know like oh when you're having a bad moment it's easy it gets easier but in the moment it's still difficult yeah yeah so you you probably continue thinking about this for you know thinking in this line probably mm -hmm. for most of the day right yes absolutely and maybe I mean you tell me but like um was it until you started like telling your husband like I just need to process this that you even came out of that tell me more about that yeah, I would say, you know, once I, once I kind of like started talking about it and started really thinking about like, okay, what is wrong here? And mm -hmm. looking at each situation, like, okay, that really wasn't that bad. That, that's all, you know, that's, that's your thoughts. That's not, mm -hmm. that's not the circumstance. It was just your thought. Mm -hmm. um, and just sort of trying to process in the moment. And it's a busy day. So you have a lot going on and you don't have a lot of time to, you know, sit alone and kind of process everything. But, um, you know, what, once I did start kind of slowing down and just taking the time to think about it, it did, it did start getting a little easier. Yeah. And, and enjoyable. Yeah. So just kind of going back to your original thought, like it's, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be hot. There's a lot to do. 
right? Like you felt overwhelmed and then your actions from there, we already know. And then your mm -hmm. results from that thought. So listeners, this is how our thoughts create our results in our lives. Her result from this thought was that it was a struggle, right? Like your day mm -hmm. was a struggle. Absolutely. You didn't 100%. Enjoy it as much until you really got, you slow, you allowed yourself to, you know, slow down and kind of coach yourself. But your day, because of those thoughts at the very beginning of the day, kind of set the tone for the rest of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So, like, if we were to repeat the situation, say tomorrow, <laughs> and you didn't want to have a struggle of a day, what could you think differently? I mean, first of all, going into it, I've gone to this picnic since, you know, the first year when I was born, you know, it's like, it, it's, it is a good time. It's, you know, you're with the community and it's, um, you know, a lot of fun. And what it does is it kind of takes me back to when I was a kid, you know, here's my son enjoying what I used to enjoy. And actually my mom used to enjoy when she was a kid. So, mm -hmm. so you know, three generations of enjoyment. So, you know, my thought would be, you know, this is, it's going to be a great day because it kind of takes me back to my childhood. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel when you think that? Uh, excitement. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel lucky that we get to experience that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, excited, lucky. Um, just... I'm not sure. Yeah, I think that's great. I mean, when you think, yeah. gosh, you've got three generations of people here. It's going to be awesome. Takes me back to my childhood. Like that's super, I feel excited thinking that. Right. <laughs> so yeah. On track with what that thought would make you feel, right? Mm -hmm. And like when you feel excited about doing something, what happens? Then you kind of immerse yourself in, in the situation. So mm -hmm. building the sandcastle would be, you know, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um what else? You're probably not going to be yelling at people. No, you're definitely not yelling at people. And maybe, <laughs> you know, and maybe helping out. Like this thing is based on about volunteers, you know, so just getting up and, you know, helping out, doing something. Yeah. yeah. You're probably laughing more, enjoying yourself, right? Totally. Yep. Yeah. Interacting. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think your results would be from that thought? In the end, a really great day where I could sit there and be proud of my day and, and, and know that it was, you know, it was. It's like you made it the best day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like the difference in these two thoughts, right? So like the difference of managing your mind before this is so interesting right so like you probably didn't do any thought journaling right before you left I'm guessing nope no nope. <laughs> didn't coach yourself <laughs> on you know planning ahead what experience you wanted to have mm -hmm. <laughs> which I always recommend just so everybody knows like if you know that it's going to be like a big day like this and these are things that might be triggers for you to overeat or over drink like what think about how you can think that would make your results amazing. So in Amy's situation, she probably didn't do that. I mean, she does a lot of thought work. So, you know, there's nothing, no one to blame here. This is just her brain going the way that it used to go, right? So like these automatic thoughts that come up that kind of like always worst case scenario things. So of course, it's going to be a struggle. Of course, it's going to be hard. There's so much to do, right? All of these thoughts that we have about a lot of our big things that we have going on, right? And that's what causes that overwhelm. It's like when you kind of project all the stuff that you have to do and you don't know how it's going to be, you get overwhelmed. And then from that overwhelmed place, we take action or we buffer. We might drink. Like in Amy's case, she probably would have drank or ate in the past had she not had the skill of just like sitting with her feelings and analyzing her thoughts, right? And so now that Amy knows this, and she, I know she practices because I coach her all the time, but building your thought ahead of time could, could have saved her, like coaching herself ahead of time could have saved her missing that day. Right. So like now, like going forward, she can think, Oh, I've got this big event coming up. What experience do I want to have? I'm going to have fun. I'm going to stick to my drink and eating plan. It's going to be awesome. I'm so lucky. And then that is the result that you'll create. If you can intentionally think that way. 
right, Amy? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I would say for every time that we have sat down and made an intentional thought model, um, you know, at one point I was, I was, I remember talking about this one party that I was going to, and Mm -hmm. I was struggling coming up with like what my first thought could be. And you said, all right, let's stop. What do you want your result to be? And I was like, well, you know what I want my result to be is that I leave there going, wow, that was a great time. I had a, you know, I had a great time talking to my friends Mm -hmm. and you go, great. So let's build on that. And, and so then we went back to um, what my first thought should be about this party. And in that moment I go, oh, so you're saying my thought will create my result. (laughs) And you're like, "Uh, yeah, like, (laughs) that's the whole point of this. And it but in that moment, you know, it just it became so abundantly clear of, oh, okay, so it literally is just my thought that is going to and like I said, you've said it a million times, it was just in that moment, I finally got it. Yeah. And sometimes it takes just like, this is one of the benefits of having a coach is like showing you your own thoughts, right? Like we are so in our own shit half the time. Mm -hmm. We can't see that our thoughts are creating our results, right? Like we have 60,000 thoughts a day. So sometimes we don't identify which ones aren't serving us. Right. So you can create any thought you want at any time. If you want to have a specific result, especially around social situations, if you want to have a, you want to go and have a good time and not over drink or overeat, you can, but you got to change the way you're thinking about it. Instead of like, Mm -hmm. I'm worried how this is going to go. I'm worried that I'm over drink. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to feel like. Imagine like going into that experience with an unmanaged mind and you just show up with all this confusion and unsureness about what it's going to be like. And then you can't handle that. And then you drink. So I think that showing our listeners the value and the impact that managing your mind in this situation, especially for a big social event like this is so awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And the, um, the whole planning your thought was like something that was very foreign to me. Like, well, you know, you need to plan of what your thought is going into this. Mm -hmm. And it was foreign, but once I started doing it, it was like, oh, what a great idea, you know, and it's, it's not, it's not so much like, you know, an expectation where it has to be met, but you just have to be okay with, um, you know, your, your, your thought, I mean, your thoughts are just, they're just so important. And so, you know, planning to have a good time at a party is okay. And when things don't go your way, it's, it's okay too. You Mm -hmm. know, it's, you know, you, you now have the tools to, to manage your, your way through it. Yeah. So, so good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So that is what a a little coaching example looks like (laughs) y'all. Hopefully you can see yourself in these situations. Um, Amy, thank you so much. I think we're going to wrap here. Hopefully you guys got a lot out of that podcast. Um, if you have any questions about coaching with me privately or want to reach out, you know how to get a hold of me, Amy. Thank you. So thank you. I've thank thoroughly you. Enjoyed this. Yes. It's been awesome. You are. Thank amazing. you. Thank you for a lot. But you know, thank you for also having me on on the on the podcast. Yeah. Well, thank you for. Tr- I know we're just totally <laughs> getting each other right now, but <laughs> I just want to say thank you for believing in yourself first of all that you can do this, and then trusting me to help guide you. I mean, it's like an honor for when people give me their money and give me their time, and we spend two months together. So I don't take that lightly. So thank you. Yes, well, you're very welcome. (laughs) All right, y'all. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Bye. If you are interested in getting results like Amy did, you can schedule your free 30-minute consultation with me via the link in the show notes. Don't wait. Never. It's never the perfect time, right? Be like Amy. Come on over. Schedule that consultation with me and start to live the life that you want to live instead of the one that has you caught on auto repeat with over drinking and overeating. Talk to you next week. Bye for now.